Hello everyone, thank you very much for inviting me to speak this evening. I can't be there personally, unfortunately, because I'm here in Colombia. What is internationalism? Well, that's a very difficult question. And Hazel's been very clear with me that I've only got five minutes within which to answer it. So I'm just going to focus on one very simple, but I think very radical point. An internationalist perspective, an internationalist ethics, an internationalist politics is one that is equally concerned about the lives of people in all parts of the world. I'm not yet saying what the policies are that should be associated with such a perspective, let alone whether they're left or right wing. I'm making a, an ideological assertion, a normative statement, as the academics would say, a value-laden statement. I can't prove it. And you might say it's so common nowadays, everyone would agree with it, why am I wasting my five minutes on it? But I think that if we were to really act upon this perspective, we would see a radical transformation in our politics, both national and international. We should be equally concerned with people wherever they are in the planet, and our politics and our decision making should reflect that. The 20th century saw great strides in the cause of internationalism. The existence of the United Nations is testament to that. Colonialism came to an end far faster than the colonists expected, and a communications revolution has made real the concept of a global village. Perhaps most important of all, racism, so long an integral part of domestic and foreign policy, is unacceptable in almost all fora nowadays, even if it remains common in practice. This is real human progress. So don't let the naysayers tell you that everything's going wrong. Nevertheless, today in 2013, there's the danger that rather than cementing an internationalist perspective in our collective psyche, we might begin to see it erode. The wealthy nations of the last century are caught up in their own economic problems, probably for the long term, and poorer countries, previously treated with an element of largesse and generosity, at least in rhetoric, are now the subject of competition as they seek jobs and investment. Powerful voices are calling on us to turn inwards, not the pernicious nationalism of yesterday, although that might be the case in some European countries, but a kind of increasing nation centrism that's always been at the heart of realist international relations. So I ask you this, how internationalist are we really? Not in words, but in deeds and in policies. Almost all political discussion in almost all countries is framed in terms of the national interest first, with possibly an internationalist perspective being added on later. It's considered absurd and embarrassing to suggest that things should be otherwise, that we should consider the well-being of non-citizens as much as our own fellow citizens. And while this is quite understandable given the constituencies to which politicians have to refer for their votes, it's nevertheless the biggest barrier to decisions being made in the interest of all human beings. Take the great Ferrari in the UK over the mega bonuses being paid to bankers in the face of continued economic turmoil, or the ubiquitous infographics demonstrating the incredible inequality in the United States. I'm worried that the implication is that were things more equal in the UK or United States, we could all relax again. Back in the 60s and 70s, it was all okay. But international inequality is irrelevant, surely, for an internationalist. Or take another bugbear of mine. Should we legalise drugs, a favourite in common debate in drug-using countries, but very seldom in relation to the thousands of deaths every year in Mexico or the way coca wars are destroying the lives of Colombian farmers, almost always framed in terms of health and crime in Western countries? My criticism is not of conservatives. At least conservatives are coherent. They explicitly state that family and country are their priorities and then build policies to defend an unjust status quo which they believe to be the way of the world. No, my criticism is of the so-called 
progressives who profess to believe that humans everywhere are as valuable as humans at home, but whose policies imply something quite different. The challenges the world now faces are without doubt of a scale never seen before. In a resource-limited world, we need fairer distribution if we're going to reach anything approaching similar standards of living globally. The apparent irony, although not actually an irony, is that only an internationalist perspective can really stand up for the interests of the majority, the 99%, in the wealthier countries. The call of one campaign group to globalise resistance was always an exceptionally sensible one. Only a truly international political platform can come close to challenging the power of the 0.001% in this world of global capital. And yet we are miles away from a popular public political discourse which coherently marries the struggles of the marginalised in the wealthier countries with those in much poorer countries, let alone a discourse which publicly acknowledges the need to sacrifice material living standards in wealthy countries for the sake of people many miles away. The cause of internationalism is beset on all sides by a so-called realism in international relations and a set of incentives which draws decision makers to a nationally limited understanding, however much they want to engage in a coherent internationalist point of view. Internationalist perspectives are considered radical or unrealistic or even unpatriotic when they are in fact the only sound basis for a 21st century politics and ethics, the only rational response to the world as we now experience it, and in fact, the only way to avoid global catastrophe, let alone live up to the principles we profess.